Welcome citizens of EDTP 580. This is a video email to go over what we did on Wednesday, June the 10th. First of all, the summer blockbuster uh, EDTP 580 June 10th Collaborate movie is up and available for you to watch. Um, it is a lot of me talking which is what it should be, and then a lot of demonstrations of the things that we did in class. I have received several emails. Uh, emails, of course, are always welcome. Uh, remember, SMS works faster if you want to reply. That was 502-457-2937. Remember to put your name in the first text so I know who you are from then on out. Let's go over what we did and did not do today um, and reassure you that we will go over it Friday. Um, I've also invited you to a doodle poll, show you what it is in just a second, uh, to make a selection about which digital citizenship element you're going to be responsible for creating a voice thread for. We um, We'll go over that Friday, how to do the voice thread. You can certainly wait until Friday to make your choice in the doodle poll. Okay, I've gotten a lot of emails from people asking about, first of all, when is all this due? Well, all this is due July 6, so relax. We will have more time to get caught up than you realize right now. That is deliberately done. There are days when the schedule, in other words, what you have to do in class is light. That is deliberately done to give you the opportunity to work in class. You should be thinking about working in class primarily except for these first two assignments because they're big ones. So the voice thread will start on Friday you have all weekend and Monday to work on it. Remember, I'm a text away with questions. You have already, and I'll show you where it is, a voice thread account made for you. I won't go too much into this because there's tons of videos in Module 2 that explain everything about voice thread. Just realize you have an account, and that account information, I will show you here in just a second, is already there. Second. People are asking me today about the module one about creating three TED Talks. I'll show you where that is in just a second. So today, if you remember, we took Sir Ken Robinson's How to Escape Education's Death Valley and put that into your personal wiki. You may respond to that. Remember you go to your wiki page, you hit edit, and up it pops. It's that simple. And then you can start typing on it just like you would in any other word processor. Be aware you can't move things around on the page except by using your cursor, your inner key to move things, backspace to pull things up. It's not the most elegant way, but it's the easiest way, believe me. Anybody who's ever used a web design page page will realize, wow, this is this is pretty straightforward. Okay, let's quickly go over this. What is TED Talks? Well, TED Talks are located in your Module 1. You've probably heard of TED. And you probably think the E stands for education. Guess what? It doesn't. <laughs> it stood for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. TED was created by a group of people in Silicon Valley who used to get together, drink wine, and eat cheese. I am not making this up. And all these rich snobby folks would stand around and they would say, so what have you been doing over there at Google? Or what have you been doing over there at Microsoft? Or what have you been doing over there at Apple? And they would share their little, their little stories. Then they had their friends who were entertainers show up for these little wine and cheese parties. They would get up and do the same thing. Design people would show up and they would talk about trends in design. 
And then one day, somebody invited the guy who invented the internet. You know him, Al Gore. And Al said he had a little PowerPoint he wanted to show him called An Inconvenient Truth. And as they say, the rest is history. All of a sudden, TEDs became very important and a staple of internet watching, video watching. What I've done here with the TED Talks is I have put in what I consider some of the best. Now, you do not have to use these. Oh, look. Oh, dear. Look, they're not even working. <laughs> well, then I will fix them. Um, you can just go to TED. Let me show you where it lives. TED, ideas worth spreading. And some of the best ones do have to do with education. Awesome math. Really? Okay. Now, you already know how to do a lot of this, don't you? So, you're going to watch it. And you're going to respond to it in your uh, wiki. How do you get it over to your wiki? You already know how to do this. The ones that I'll have uh, that I'll fix, you just right click on them, copy the embed code, put it in your wiki, turn edit on, widgets, other HTML, paste in the code, save, the gray box shows up. You can now write about it or you can click save and watch it, hit edit, write about it paragraph. That's all I'm looking for. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I guess in the pulling it over through um, pulling it over when we set up the class, it didn't take. And that's my fault, and I will fix it. It's rather embarrassing, to be honest with you. But that's okay. I'll get it fixed here as soon as I get through talking to you. Um, you can also, here's the link that I was talking about, the link that will take you here to the YouTube. Uh, a lot of students just use this. Here we go. Right click, get embed code, off you go. And the nice thing about when you over here in the TED, um, is all the TEDs are here. And you just scroll down and find the ones that interest you. They are fascinating. They are just some of the best things you'll watch. Some of my favorites are Arthur Benjamin, who does a lot of math stuff. Um, you're already using one TED Talk, and that's the Ken Robinson. He has about three or four here. The list goes on and on and on. It's just amazing. All right. So that's the TED Talks. Here's the other thing that's in the assignment where it has you talk about your ideas and thoughts about technology and education. Here's the 30 education trends for 2015. And here's the internet growing right in front of your very eyes. Um, if you click on that, you can watch what all is going on out there on the internet. It takes it a second to kick in and then boom, off she goes. So in the time that I'm sitting here making this little things for you, you can see that we have 32, 34, 36 video hours uploaded to YouTube. You have 48, 50,000 video hours watched. I won't keep doing this. You see what it's doing. Okay. Look at how many hours of watching Netflix has. Look how many hours of listening Pandora has. Isn't that cool? It's one of my favorite things. So these are all located right here in that first module. 
you're looking at the trends and you're just seeing this is what people are talking about um, that's important for technology and education in 2015. Here's the internet in real time. You can actually watch it going. And there's the link to the TED Talks. All right, I hope I've cleared that up. Now, let's talk about an email that you have received. You have received two emails from me. One, you can ignore. I apologize for it. Uh, it's this one that says, Nine Principles of Digital Citizenship. Uh, I made a mistake and sent this out without totally editing it. So just ignore it. You're, you don't have to worry about it. The one I want you to pay attention to is this one, which is the one that starts off with EDTP 580. And what it's asking you to do is to go in here and select one of these digital citizenship uh, principles. Put your name in over here and then select one. You may have two people working on one principle. It's fine with me. So if you have a buddy in the class and you all want to work together, great. The cool thing about VoiceThread is you can work collaboratively in virtual space. You don't have to be sitting next to each other or working together in the same space. VoiceThread is a very, very, very interesting Web 2.0 uh, tool. So that was Module 1. We're moving on to Module 2. That's what the Doodle is setting us up for. Um, if you would look at the videos, they're already here in Module 2. It will get you ready for the framework. It talks about a voice thread creation. And the other part is where does the voice thread go? It'll talk you through how we're going to put our voice threads in two places. You're going to put it on your wiki page, and that's for me to grade. You're going to put it in a discussion form here in our Blackboard space. And that discussion form is right there. And what you'll do, and I'll show you how to do this, um, is you will essentially click in here and you're going to create a thread and very similar to what you will now already are knowing you're going to paste your embed code from your voice thread into this space and then when you submit it your voice thread will appear here in our discussion form kind of cool I think I've covered everything Friday when we get in, I'll make sure you understand about the TED Talks uh, because I did skip it and I skipped it for a very good reason. We all were freezing to death in there this afternoon and I wanted to get you out. Um, but I'll make sure we cover it. You will have to endure with the one and only PowerPoint that I will present to you on Friday. Uh, I'll make it quick. It is essentially the framework for understanding decision making in the process of digital citizenship elements, how we really become acquainted and how we help students understand what their choices are when it comes to the issues surrounding digital citizenship. And that's what we will do Friday. I will then show you how to make a voice thread and then I'll turn you loose. We will go quickly. And I'll give you plenty of time to start getting yourselves organized. And we will, as I said, you won't have class Monday, so you can work on your voice thread. Let me repeat, everything is due June, July 6. July 6. You will have many opportunities in class to either do catch-up work or work that we start in class and you can complete in class. So don't worry. Last thing, as I said, the Blockbuster is already up there. Here's our first movie of class. So this is class today. 
It's in the link over here that says EDTP 580 recordings. You click on this link and collaborate will start the movie. Um, if you already have launcher on your machine, you can just click on where it says start launcher and you click on OK. And eventually what will happen is the movie will start. I hope you've realized that nothing happens quickly in Collaborate. <laughs> Except maybe if you hit the talk button and want to talk to me. And then it, it's pretty quick. It's pretty fast. But if you're trying to watch things or if you're trying to see what it's doing, it's verifying. When you're trying to actually use Collaborate to get into the online class, it is a slow, painful process. And I'm sitting here on a fast computer and on a fast connection. It just kills me how, um, how slow all of this is. It will start playing in the background. So all of a sudden, you're going to hear me talking, and you'll hear me talking in the background. Can I sit here, make you sit here and watch this for much longer? No. But as you can see, it's, it's loading in. Uh, the thing that it has at the bottom of it is, and there it goes, the thing it has at the bottom of it is it has a scrubbing bar. And a scrubbing bar is nothing more than a little arrow uh, that you use in all, you know, video programs and that little arrow then you can move through the video so you're actually seeing this thing right here is is our video from our class today it's crazy all right that's it um i will see you friday friday at 12 30. remember any questions any concerns text me 502-457-2937 bye